Okay, we are going to continue our journey uh, with Fanthir, the half-orc gladiator, and uh, Telen, our Furoran Templar, who is as big as a house. Um, he has monstrous size, evolved a few times. Um, our Furoran has a food rating of 5, um, so he's about the size of a, of a building. Um, he also has the Frost Touch mutation, uh, so he will be dealing um, energy damage with each attack action that he does. 24 energy damage with each attack action. The Gladiator is equipped with a Lunar Blade, uh, so he is also able to counterattack, and uh, he's gained um, energy re regen because of that. Um, our half work amazingly has alluring pheromones, so um, he is able to um, bribe uh, other elements of the game, um, like caravan masters or um, enemies that they might fight. He also can change and shift our reputation. Um, so why don't uh, we finish up our last game turn? So we ended the last video um, during the event phase. We took a caravan. Uh, we took Melhin the Hunter. Um, he took us to Nemziniet. Um, we miraculously uh, got there without any kind of uh, a, a problem. We drew the Kismet uh, Caravan event, um, which ends the caravan journey. Um, so that's a good thing. Um, he is now in Mez uh, Nemziniet, so we can take um, him again if we wanted to in the future. Uh, or we could draw a random um, caravan master. Uh, in fact, as you end a caravan journey, uh, the event phase uh, stops. Um, so we do not we do not play an event phase in a city state. Ravager is going to leave the board, and he will be um, coming back next round, next turn. So next uh, turn is the movement phase. Let's just stay in Nemzin yet. We're going to perform a few things. Um, I think what we're going to end up doing is we will do a gladiator event here. Um, <clears throat> let's take a look at the Nemzin yet placard. So Scarabs in Nemzin yet is uh, enhanced. Um, we can win uh, more, uh, I guess, wealth here. Um, we have pro uh, a... The danger event is mugging, so we could be mugged uh, if we spend gold. Um, the uh, the employ option is an entertainer, and it is good for assists and sappers. Uh, we don't have assists or sappers, so we're not gonna we're not gonna become employed in in Nemzin yet uh, this turn. Um, so it looks like we're gonna purchase some items, and then uh, we can actually purchase some. Uh, schooling and sparring as well if we wanted to the um, our uh, our reputation does match Nems and yet so we get a minus one bonus to schooling and sparring as well as uh, the city-state items that we can purchase so I think the first thing uh, we're gonna do is we are going to um, <clears throat> I'm going to give the gladiator some gold. The Templar is going to give the gladiator some gold so that we can get around this danger event. Um, so basically what it is is the more you shop in Nemzin Yet, the higher chance you'll be mugged or pickpocketed. Roll a 10-sided die each time you purchase items in Nemzin Yet. If the result is less than or equal to the highest costing item, you lose 3 gold to pickpockets. If you do not have the gold to lose, you suffer 3 energy drain per gold you are short. So maybe what I should do is try and uh, spend my gold so that he suffers energy drain instead of losing the gold. Um, <clears throat> what I think we're going to get is a belt of many pouches. In fact, we should get two of those. Uh, that's going to be 30 gold. So I'm going to do that, first of all. Is there anything else we want? Sphinx blood booster. This thick syrup amplifies the effect radiation has on your body. Draw three mutation cards and choose one to replace a mutation you possess. Hmm. So we could get rid of a mutation if we wanted to. Um, bag of holding. I think we're just going to get the uh, belt of many pouches. We'll get two of those, and I'm going to give five gold. The Templar is going to give five gold to the gladiator. 
Um, so he'll have 30 gold. He's going to spend all 30 and in the... Um, in the bazaar, and now they both have uh, belts of many pouches. Um, may, uh, basically what that is going to allow us to do is uh, it allows us to use an item using any action in combat instead of just the defend action. So we could be using an attack action and use an item. Okay. All right, uh, so that's that. Uh, we have to roll, um, and we only bypass it if we roll a hex. So that's a five. The uh, gladiator is mugged. Thankfully, he spent his money, uh, so he takes uh, three energy drain. All right, um, and then let's see. We can perform the action. <clears throat> So, do we want to purchase any gear upgrades? Do some schooling and sparring? Or why don't we just do the gladiator events? I think that's what we're going to do. Okay, so we're going to enter the arena. <clears throat> this is the first time that we're doing that uh, in this game. Uh, so the arena, basically what we're doing is we will be rolling uh, to see what event uh, we are going to participate in. Um, we begin in the unknown uh, fame category, so we're going to roll a d10, and we get the sixth event, which is martial opponents. So we will be rolling against um, by t uh, health, energy, attack, or defend. Um, <clears throat> we're going to also check to see what the number of feats are. So the feats for this martial opponents is three. We have no uh, base feat uh, increase in the unknown fame category. Um, <clears throat> and then we would then have one extra for each hero participating. So we have five total feats that we need to acquire. We will get five gold from this event. Uh, so five and five. And this placard will be, um, it will be laminated when, when we receive it here. So I'm not writing in on it because I've just got this on the, on the heavy cardboard. Okay, um, so what we're going to do is we take each hero and we're going to roll a stat test of those four stats. We get to choose one each. And uh, if we get a success, we earn a feat to complete the event. If we get a critical success, we get two feats to complete the event. Now the gladiator has a special ability um, that um, <clears throat> he chooses one stat for every five health ranks you possess. Once chosen, you may not reassign. When you roll a stat test in an arena against this stat and succeed, you gain an additional feat. So when he, he has uh, 14 health, um, so he has chosen the health and attack uh, stats to gain the bonus feat. So when he rolls, he's actually gaining one extra. Okay, so <clears throat> Gladiator, I think the first thing we're going to do is roll against health. And I rolled a 10. That is terrible. Uh, all right, well, so I can reduce that roll. Um, for every point of uh, vital that I uh, sacrifice, I can reduce that by 2. So if I sacrifice 5 vitals, um, that will become a crit success and earn us 3 feats. Okay, so I think I'm going to do that. Um, so I'm going to go down to zero energy and eight health. And that has become a critical success. Um, so that means we've gained three feats of our five. Um, next thing that happens is our Templar is going to roll. We'll also roll against health. His health is 19. So he's going to crit success on a, um, uh, on a number of all the way up to uh, nine because um, the way the crit successes work in Hexplorit is once your uh, rank is 12, uh, you crit success on not only a hex but on a result of a two as well. So if you're a 13, it's a hex two or three. His health is a 19, so it's hex two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, he will only um, fail on a result of a 10. Now, one other thing to note is you um, only 
uh, are rolling against your current vital. You're not rolling against your total vital. So in the case of the gladiator, um, we had 11 uh, health. So I did not get his bonus uh, because it wasn't uh, high enough. Okay, so Templar is at full health. We're gonna roll and that's a crit success. So we got a seven. So that uh, takes out the other two, um, the other two feats that are needed. Uh, we'll go ahead and roll the occurrence. Um, it might give us some extra gold or it might change uh, something that happens. So the way that you roll occurrences, um, we typically take the uh, green die, uh, navigate, and the yellow die. Green die is your tens, yellow is your ones, and we're gonna roll a uh, percentile dice on these. So I get a 52. So a 52 is nothing happens that we can't otherwise control. So we're we're done with this uh, arena event. Um, we've each gained five gold because of it. Okay. And now we are recognized. So I marked that off on our battle mat, um, and we are done with that event. Now um, the arena is quite a bit different in Tari. You can actually fight opponents in the arena in Tari. Um, that's that uh, city-state special, so um, that's a little different. But as you can see, as you continue to work down this uh, fame list here, it gets more intense um, and uh, you will have a harder time of it. Um, we started the, the arena pretty late in the game, so it's pretty easy at this point for us. Okay, uh, so that was our game turn. The Ravager is now going to appear, um, and because we are in Act 2, he is going to appear on our um, location. So in this case, we're not in the Wastes, he's going to appear in uh, the quadrant containing Nemzignette. Now, unlike the uh, Wastes, which only have four uh, Ravager nodes, uh, the Quadrants have six. So we're going to be rolling a six-sided die, and we're going to see which node won. So that is the node the Ravager appears on. So let's put down a Remnant. Hopefully he doesn't destroy the city that we are in, and he doesn't. So that is right here. I think you can see that on the camera there. Okay, so next game turn. I think what we could do, if we wanted to, we could um, heal. Be healing in this city here. Oh, you know what? I didn't give us the discounts, the discounted gold um, for purchasing items last turn. So we'll take back the two gold. All right, so if we wanted to, um, we could stay at the bathhouse and heal all lost vitals. So I think we're gonna do that just to heal up. Um, so, and purchasing items does not take one of your actions in the city state, um, so we don't need to worry about, about that. So I'm gonna give my other two gold to the Templar. Um, so he will be at zero, and uh, he's going to purchase entry into uh, the bazaar. Um, we don't uh, have to worry about thugs. We all heal completely. Okay, and then um, I think what we'll do is we'll do another, we do another uh, event. We will get ex some extra gold here. Um, yeah, let's do one more event to get some extra gold, and then uh, we'll see what we want to do after that. Okay, <clears throat> so the next thing we're doing is we're going to roll to see what we get on our arena event. We roll a 10. Um, that's beast handling, so that is probably the least paying um, or arena event. Um, it begins at a, a rate of one gold, and uh, we would get up to uh, four more because of our um, base reward. The number of feats required is only three plus two is five again, so we only need five feats to complete this event. We can only roll against health, energy, defend, or survival. 
and we've got really high uh, ranks for each. Okay, so let's roll against health. Uh, Gladiator's gonna crit success on a four or less. Six, and we get a hex for the Templar. Templar's gonna get two. I'm just going to spend uh, one vital to reduce that by two. That's six uh, down to a two, and that is going to give us um, all five feats. So that means we each get five gold. 32. And now we are famous instead of uh, recognized. Okay, so <clears throat> that is the end of that uh, game turn. The Ravager is going to disappear. Oh, if we roll a hex, he can uh, fall on our location this next turn we might have to consider taking a caravan out. Why don't we do one more arena event, see if we can get some extra gold. Um, <clears throat> just wondering if we wanted to do anything else. Uh, I think that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna do one more arena event. Let's roll to see what the event type is. Um, we roll a hex. That's the roar of a crowd. The crowd favors you. Roll again and gain one feat toward your next event. So the next one is a four. Magical opponent. Um, so we are going to need um, seven feats in this event. Actually six because we've gained one from that hex roll. Uh, we can only roll um, health, energy, or our masteries. Our masteries are really high. We've, we've really lucked out with our power-ups. Um, <clears throat> the number of gold that we're going to be getting is 11. 11 gold this time. And uh, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll for the gladiator. Um, and we'll roll against health again. And we roll a three, that's a crit success. So that's two, actually that's three because of his uh, uh, passive ability. The Templar will roll also against health and he gets a crit success. So that's another two, that's five already. <clears throat> um, we have an occurrence, so our green is our tens. 25, 25 is you're winning over the audience. You may re-roll your next performance roll and we get a plus two gold. So um, our gold is gonna go up to 13 per hero. That's pretty good. And uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is roll uh, adrenaline for the gladiator and we get a five. So that is uh, the last feat that we need. Uh, Templar will roll Nourish and he gets a two as well. So that's two more feats. We'll roll one more occurrence. Green is tens. We get a 62. Uh, you've suffered a misstep. Your next performance roll gains a plus one penalty. So we do have a minus one gold to the event because of that. We, in the end, we each get 12 gold. All right, uh, so then we are celebrated. And now that we're celebrated, we have a minus one gold cost at every location in the game. Um, so that is, that's a pretty good thing. Um, if we look at that in the rule book, uh, it says the gold cost of items purchased in any location uh, to a minimum of one. So every location we go to is at a minus one. Now if we have the reputation bonus, that's another minus one. So our items are gonna cost minus two gold um, if we go back to Ferrara. So that's a good thing. Um, all right, so I at this point, we are entering the uh, villain phase. The uh, Ravager is going to appear. Uh, hopefully we, d we don't roll a six. We roll a four. So the uh, Ravager appears right here, right next to us. <clears throat> And uh, he can still take out Nemzin yet. So I think at this point, uh, we might want to do, if we do one more Gladiator event, uh, we'll each get a power-up card. And uh, we're going to be getting quite a bit more. Uh, oh, actually, we need to get, um, 
one more after that. So we would need we would get eight gold though. Um, think we have enough gold. I think we have enough gold. Okay, I think what we're gonna do is we are going to leave behind the arena. Um, we we have to stop our dallying. Um, is there any? Let's do schooling and sparring. That's gonna be a minus one uh, to the cost. Get some uh, skill upgrades here. So I think that's what we're gonna do. Um, I will quickly just kind of fast forward the uh, videos. Okay, we're back. Uh, so the gladiator, um, we ended up giving him, uh, we did the schooling and sparring in Nems and Yet, and that was allowing the explore, explore, navigate, no, I'm sorry, not navigate, explore, energy, and attack. So we did just that. Um, we took three explore ranks, uh, we took three energy ranks and three attack ranks uh, in in that city state. Same kind of thing uh, for the Templar. We took three um, explore. We took three attack and three energy. Uh, so at least our energy is increasing a little bit. Uh, that's going to definitely uh, help us um, combat the Ravager in the end of the game. So that was our um, our event phase. I think what we're also going to do is uh, spend gold on the caravan journey. Um, so that's going to allow us to take a caravan out of this place. Um, and that is going to cost us uh, two gold per hero because we have the minus one. We're celebrated gladiators. People start to know us now. So they are charging us a little less. Um, so that's going to cost us four total. Um, the Templar gladly pays that, and we get to choose. Um, we can either uh, flip over to see what who the next uh, caravan master is, um, or we can take one. So let's actually just flip one over. We get Abdali. That's going to give us a plus one to um, uh, explore, plus one to explore, and two gold. Um, and he lives in Duria. Or we can use Melhin again and gain the bonuses to survival. Maybe we should take the Explore. If you prevent Abdali's caravan from suffering any damage from a sandstorm event, each hero draws a power-up card. If you prevent any damage from two or more sandstorm events, double each power-up's bonus. Okay. So why don't we take Abdali Al Manwa? Um, his his, his uh, looks like he's going to be pulling us downward into the cruel. Uh, he's one of the richest nobles in all of Shirax. He's built an impressive trade empire, but instead of running it from his manor, he longs for adventure, preferring the harsh sun and sand instead. His reputation for being tenacious is well known. When you meet the man, you find him to be full of himself, crude, and extremely protective of his merchandise. So, um, why don't we do that? We're going to take Abdali's caravan to Ferora, uh, where we will set up for the end of the game. Um, Let's just count our remnants on the board. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we have one, two turns left before we enter phase three. At that point, we better be facing the Ravager. Uh, otherwise, we will be suffering energy drain based on the uh, number of remnants on the board. So in this case, um, starting at uh, when there are 12 remnants on the board, you enter phase three and the party suffers one uh, energy drain for every two rem remnants on the board. So each game turn, excuse me, each game turn will be suffering six energy drain. <clears throat> okay, so then we are going to um, flip over some caravan events. Encounter, that's gonna be our first one here. So you've encountered something to, oh, an encounter. Melhin is good against encounters. Had we taken Melhin, we would have gotten uh, double the encounter rewards, and he would suffer no damage if we chose to skip it. Well, we could choose to skip this one. Um, we would miss out on a plus one to explore. Um, you've encountered something tr terrible. Draw the first <coughs> open encounter. or dr Oh, so the first open encounter is a genie. Oh, okay. Well, we could take out the genie, I think. 
let's we'll do it. Let's do it. So, um, Genie, let's put their information on the board here. So he's got 18 health, 30 energy. Um, the first thing I think we're gonna do is the gladiator is going to. I think we're just gonna do attacks for each each of us here. Yeah. Okay. So each of us are going to be doing a uh, attack action. Uh, so thirteen and uh, eight. And when the Templar attacks, he's also doing 24 energy damage. Uh, we also have five more energy damage coming in because of our, um, ooh, we've got some glare going on here. Let me see if I can change that here. Okay, that's a little bit better. <clears throat> okay, so as I was saying, uh, we have uh, plus five energy damage each round because of the Furoran uh, knowledge bonus. Um, <clears throat> Now, that's going to be enough to kill him if he doesn't do anything else. Um, the wielder of the blade gains the wielder bonus below and regen of one energy. So we also are regening energy. He actually goes up to six energy this round. <clears throat> um, in fact, why don't we just use adrenaline? So just in case now I think I think we're okay doing what we're what we're doing. Okay. Roll for the genie. We roll a three. Single target energy suffer damage equal to half your total energy rank. Uh, the genie heals health equal to the amount suffered. Okay, so uh, one of us is going to become a target here. The gladiator rolls a ten. Uh, Templar rolls a four. Um, so he's going to actually um, suffer four energy. And um, the genie heals four energy. So 13 and eight is 22 uh, or 21. Um, he heals four. He's got one health remaining. Oh, that is crazy. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Genie can't do this. He can't do this because uh, he's of the energy damage coming in. He's got 29 energy damage. He cannot pay that uh, energy cost for that ability. Um, <clears throat> or actually, never mind. I believe I've got that mixed up. Um, he, the energy cost uh, is incurred during the declaration, during the opponent phase. He's able to do that. Now he's completely wiped of, of energy after the resolution phase when our damage takes place. So he does do that. He's got one health left. Um, and this next turn, I think um, Gladiator is just going to do uh, two attacks. Uh, each of our uh, uh, um, characters are going to do that. We roll another three. It defaults to attack at half um, potency. So group health and navigate. Um, so that would be, uh, we roll a navigate of three here, and it's a pass. We roll a navigate of 10 here, that's a pass. So the surrounded condition uh, falls on the Templar, but because combat is over, uh, the Templar doesn't, um, isn't affected by it. They both suffer five damage. So we go down to nine here and 14 here. And that is the end of the genie encounter. So at least we're going to be getting a power-up card uh, for this uh, encounter. We also get three platinum. So our platinum is, uh, we've got six platinum total here. That's 600 gold. <clears throat> um, and uh, we get a power-up, nice. Oh, plus one, all abilities, and another evolve? What? That's crazy. Oh, I think we're definitely going to put his evolve on Frost Touch. Um, it's going to do a bunch more damage, so let's do that. Um, so his, he's got Frost Touch evolved four times, uh, meaning he is doing uh, uh, 1632. Uh, energy damage with each um, of his um, basic attacks. 32 energy damage. Okay, um, the gladiator has got f 
uh, plus one to all uh, abilities coming in. Okay, nice. Can't go wrong there. All right, so we flipped over the first encounter. The next, uh, the next caravan event is Lost Ruins. Uh, you've uncovered a lost, a long lost ruin. Assist the caravan master in exploring it. Size matters to the stat test, so that basically means that we are having a negative penalty um, based on our size rating. This is better explored by small races. Uh, if you roll a critical fail, the caravan master no longer grants bonuses to stat tests. If you reduce all damage, you find four king's elixirs. Whoa, that'd be awesome. Um, all right. So we do have a matching stat, and that would be explore. Um, oh, hang on. Yeah, that's right. We, I was going to say we get double the encounter rewards because we took Melhin's caravan, but we didn't. We took Abdali's. Okay, so Lost Ruins. Uh, let's go ahead and have the Gladiator try it first. He gets a plus to his stat test equal to his food rating. Oh, and it's going to be a five or a less. And we get a three. A three reduced by uh, Abdali's uh, two bonus is a hex uh, plus his food rating goes up to a four it's just barely enough for that to be considered a success so that is a minus two to the to the energy drain this is a uh, four plus car that means it's uh, four plus two there's two heroes in the game so that's six damage reduced down to four next up we have the perfected technique we're gonna roll against his purple which is a nine or less and we miss that one um, so Ouch. So that one, uh, we still have four damage. Let's take two of the spell components and uh, get rid of those. We reduce it down to two damage, two energy drain. So he's down to nine health, zero energy. The Templar is going to roll against uh, his Nourish first. So that's a roll of a 10. Remember, he's he's huge. I don't know how our Templar is going to really help in this situation. He's getting a plus five penalty to this roll. And we rolled a nine. Terrible. Okay, so um, you did not reduce that one. Um, we really just need a hex uh, on this Explorer roll in order to reduce it completely. I don't know if that's going to happen, and it does not happen. So... Unfortunately, we only have one spell component left, which would reduce this down to one uh, energy drain. So let's just, we'll use it. And um, we did not get those four um, King's Elixirs. Oh my gosh, another Lost Ruins. Um, why don't we skip this Lost Ruins event? We're going to choose not to help the caravan on this last one. They're already suffering one, and they would be suffering five more. Uh, so we would simply uh, lose out on both of those Explore bonuses. Um, but at this point, we just couldn't. I don't think we would make it uh, happen. Um, and our uh, we would lose our reputation bonus if we if we did this one as well. So I think we're gonna skip out on this one. <clears throat> the caravan master is at four health, zero energy. So we are only uh, considering him as alive. So we each get two gold for that at the end of this journey. And we reduce our food by one, two, three, four. Okay, and then um, Abdali is alive, so he is going to get put in his home. Uh, we can get rid of these cards, and that is that. We are now in Ferora. That is the end of that game turn, <clears throat> and uh, the Ravager disappears. He's going to. He is going to uh, be initiating phase three act three one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven yeah this next game turn when he arrives will be phase three okay 
So uh, we are going to do a couple things here. We don't have a lot of gold, um, but we do have Ravager crystals. Um, so let's take a look at the Ferrora placard. So this is a new game turn. First of all, I think we're going to turn in our next uh, knowledge. So that is three experiences of two types. Um, we've only defeated one boss. Uh, we have seen four caravan masters though, so we can mark all three off that second uh, tier. We've done uh, three discoveries for sure, and, and we own three treasures, uh, or two treasures. Um, encounters, we've done three, and uh, missions, we've done two. Um, and oh we should have when we were in Nemzinyet that would have been our our next mission we would have turned in that bounty so in fact we need to uh, get a few other things here so we get three gold from that we each get a power-up card oh man all stats awesome and we get a plus one to our second mastery, which is going to increase here. Excellent. And this is a energy, so our energy actually goes up by two. Okay, this is gonna take just a minute to, to go through. Okay, that is that. And then we have plus one second mastery here increased because of his mutation. So that is actually a plus two currently. We get to roll uh, the orange die to see if that is going to increase again. And it does not. So it's just a plus two. Um, that's still pretty darn good. So that's a seven there. Seven rank. Okay, so we've done that. We also have to gain the uh, reputation increase for the the uh, uh, caravan event. I'm sorry for the mission, which is completed. Um, then we increase uh, our uh, or we we move our reputation based on the two caravan events that we did, and the one that we did not do. So the one that we did not do goes in the opposite direction. The two that we did goes toward the Caravan Master. Um, so we would be one, two, one. We're actually one uh, spot kind of still in um, Rebellious there. Um, okay, sorry, that all is finished. Now we have six uh, Platinum. <clears throat> Um, we have a bunch of Ravager crystals. Let's get the cleanse crystals. 10 piercing energy damage or reduce its outlast value by two. Cleanse crystals can do that, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna get uh, two cleansed crystals for 12 Ravager uh, crystals. So we are down to four Ravager crystals. We have three cleansed crystals. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Um, next thing that we're going to do is we are going to, uh, oh, we get our knowledges. Uh, so we get two more power ups for that. Excellent. Plus one energy, plus one navigates. Plus one navigate, plus one survival. Okay, so each of these have the uh, roll icons on them, so that means uh, we each are rolling twice. That energy is going to be good for the uh, gladiator because we have alluring pheromones, which gives him a plus one to the energy bonus. Okay, none of those are a four, so we have plus two energy for the gladiator. Just like that, now we have quite a bit of energy here, so that's a good thing. Uh, we have a plus one to navigate, so he's at six navigate. That will help with his um, uh, racial ability. Um, and then let's roll here. We have also two orange icons, so that is a three and a one. We do not get a bonus there. So we have a five and a one. So we have uh, five, seven, eleven. Okay, 
So we've turned in our second tier of knowledges. That means that we are increasing the amount of energy damage that we do each game turn uh, to 10 instead of five. Okay. So I think we are going to, um, I'm gonna pause the video and then we are actually setting up for our last uh, game turn where we, we are gonna fight the Ravager. In this video, we did not do quite, uh, we, we pretty much uh, stuck to exploring. Um, there are several different ways you can play this game um, and each game is going to unfold completely differently. Um, we did not do many bosses. We only fought the, the one. Uh, we will fight the Ravager coming up. Okay, everyone, we're back. Um, so we are going to finish up our game here. The uh, We are in the city of Ferora. The Ravager is on his way here. As soon as he arrives, that's going to spur uh, Act 3, uh, and that is going to cause us a great deal of harm. <clears throat> okay, so what we're going to do is um, I'm going to spend the last bit of my gold here um, I did a school and spar action in the city of Ferrara to gain a little bit of a increase on navigate. Uh, that is the last skill that we have here that are that's fairly low. Um, <clears throat> in fact, I'm going to do the same thing for the Templar, just to increase his <clears throat> by one. Eight. And uh, let's do the gladiator one more time to bring his up to uh, rank eight. And that's going to cost four, four gold left. Uh, so I think we will get a couple of, um, we'll get a couple of <coughs> potions here. Just before we go into the end battle, let's do iron scale potions. We'll do... Let's see they cost three minus two gold is they cost one gold a piece so we'll get um, we'll get four total uh, to bring our iron scale potion count up to eight between our two heroes okay so we have uh, this is the card going into the the last battle uh, we have fan through the gladiator look at that attack he's got 15 attack rank seven defend rank 10 uh, for his first mastery and 11 for his second. He's got decent skills as well and um, he has increased it, the um, health and energy up quite a bit as well. Okay, uh, conversely looking at Talen, our Templar, um, he has, uh, look at that defend, it's terrible, woefully low. Um, so we have um, attack at rank 8, holy shield only at 1, Nourish at 10, Sacred Protection at 7. Uh, he's got some decent skills and um, his shining attribute is obviously health uh, and that is because he's the size of a uh, of a barn. Oop, looks like my laptop's not plugged in here. Okay, <clears throat> sorry about that, my laptop wasn't plugged in. All right, so we are back the, uh, let's see, we've purchased our all of our gear. Uh, we've gone down to zero gold there. We still have three gold left for the gladiator. That's okay. I think we'll be done with that. All right. So at the beginning of our, at the end of our round, we move into the villain phase. The villain phase is going to uh, see the um, the ravager take out a portion of our quadrant. We are currently in the uh, lower quadrant here <coughs> in Ferrara. He takes out uh, node five, so that is right next to Ferrora, and I believe you guys can even see that uh, location on the board here. So that's right there, and there we have it. Um, <clears throat> now, we are currently in Act Three. Uh, Act Three, when it uh, begins, we begin to suffer damage. There is no escaping the increasing temperatures during Act 3. Each game turn at the beginning of the villain phase, each hero suffers energy drain equal to half the number of remnants in play. So now this happens at the beginning of the villain phase, so he has just appeared. It doesn't happen on our first turn. It will happen at the beginning of our next villain phase. So I think 
it's come too close to home. It is going to attack our uh, beloved beloved city of Ferora. We're going to fight the Ravager. So we move one. Uh, we're moving cautiously. Rolling our skills. Hex on navigate. We are not in the waste, so that means we do not have to eat any uh, food. We do get a little bit of gold and a little bit of gold over here. And uh, we don't need to worry about that navigate roll. Okay, so it would have been nice if we would have rolled all three uh, hexes and we could have then gotten a uh, power up card. Okay, so moving into the. Um, the movement phase is done. We're on a remnant containing the Ravager. That means uh, it's a boss location and we skip the circumstance phase. We move right into the end of the game. Now, when uh, you fight the Ravager, we actually have two placards for the Ravager and you place them side by side for the end battle. Now this is going to walk you through the end battle sequence with the Ravager. He has six abilities that he uses um, in, a, uh, in a normal game. He will only use um, one side or the other during uh, each combat round. So that is, there are three things happening to the heroes every game turn, uh, every combat round uh, that they are in combat with this thing. Um, in moderate or higher difficulty, the Ravager uses all six of his abilities every round. And um, uh, so there's a lot of pain going around uh, in, in a moderate or higher game. Uh, we are currently fighting uh, the Ravager on starter difficulty. Okay, so um, basically what's going to happen, let me just put these here. <clears throat> what's going to happen is uh, at the uh, opponent phase, I'm going to roll a d6, and if we roll evens, um, it uses the left uh, side of the card. If we roll odds, it uses uh, the right side of the card. Um, okay, so the first thing that we're going to do before we go into combat with this thing um, I'm actually going to be using iron scale potions um, on each of our, our characters. So what's an iron scale potion? It negates all conditions and either heals six health or raises six energy. Now the raise keyword uh, means that it goes above your, um, above your max and it also persists throughout the rest of that game turn. So during the, the movement phase as we're moving, uh, we'll use these to increase our, our um, uh, energy values, and that's going to give us a nice boost uh, to get us through the combat uh, with this thing. All right, so I'm going to use uh, two of the four on each hero to give us another tw uh, 12 energy. I'm also going to activate the Lunar Blade, uh, that, that ability, and that's going to be for three energy, you may activate the power of the moon. While your energy is three or higher, uh, you can counterattack. So uh, going into this battle, we have 15 health for the Gladiator, 21 energy. Uh, we have 19 health for the Templar and 20 energy. We also have a energy regen going on for both of these characters. Um, so that's a good thing. Okay, um, what else? I think we're ready. And we have a couple of King's Elixirs as well, so that will be a good thing. Okay, so the first round of uh, the game, um, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to apply that 10 energy drain that, that we get from the knowledges turn in in Ferora. So I'm going to do 10 energy damage to the big one, the big energy value. Um, and that is a uh, just a, a regular amount of energy damage. Uh, the next thing, the gladiator has swarm for favorite opponent. So the one of the uh, Ravager's main abilities is a swarm. Uh, we I know we haven't looked at that in this video, but um, it's a different type of opponent. It's not like your normal uh, opponents where you can use your abilities against it. Um, swarms are, are more of a of an opponent that you just have to outlast. Um, so in this case, we are, attached to this Ravager is a, a swarm. Um, and uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to decrease the outlast value by one because the gladiator has favorite opponent. So I'm going to go with a one there. 
Um, okay, what else? So then we have the belt of many pouches. That's going to allow our heroes to each use an item um, regardless of their action. So if the gladiator, uh, for instance, uses adrenaline this round, um, he can also use an item. So I think what he's going to do is use a king's elixir and use adrenaline. So his energy is going to go down to 20. Um, and he deals Gladius rank health damage to his opponent. Uh, so that's 15. We'll go with the big one here. Actually, we're going to go with the uh, defendability. We're going to apply that 15 damage to the defendability. I should back up. Uh, what you're seeing here is the Ravager of Shirax is a titanic creature. It has more than one health value. In order to kill this creature, you need to reduce all three of its health values to zero. Um, it is still only one opponent though, so that is in, important to note. Um, also, it has two energy values, and then the third is the outlast value. As these values fall to zero, this uh, creature is going to become more powerful. It's becoming more enraged as we're uh, whittling away at its, at its health uh, or energy. So ideally, um, you want to try and decrease all of these stats to the, to the uh, to zero amount as um, in the same round if you can. Um, or as close to one another as possible because if you take one out to zero then all the other ones become um, more intense. Okay, so um, we've looked at his uh, health and energy and outlast values. Um, let's move on. So adrenaline is going to kick in. That means that um, for number of rounds equal to half adrenaline rank, so that's for five rounds, uh, the gladiator will be counterattacking anytime a opponent targets him. Okay. Um, at rank five, you can ignore the uh, effects of one condition you suffer from while under adrenaline's effect. At rank eight, when adrenaline begins, you raise your health or energy by adrenaline rank. So I think he's going to increase his health in this case by 11. So his health is going to go up to 26. And that is our uh, hero currently here. Okay, so that's the gladiator's action. Um, we have to remember he used a king's elixir here. The Templar, um, I believe what he's going to do is he's going to use Sacred Protection. So he's going to uh, reduce uh, his energy by two, and he's going to block uh, eight damage on two targets divided as we choose. One of the targets becomes blessed until the end of combat. Blessed targets raise one plus half Sacred Protection, so uh, three plus so four. Uh, they would be he would be raising four health each time they damage an opponent. So the gladiator will be uh, raising his health every time he attacks uh, the the um, ravager. Okay. Now, in addition to the Templar's ability, we are going to use one of the cleansed crystals that we picked up in Ferrara. Uh, cleansed crystal may be used in combat with the Ravager. Each round deal 10 piercing energy damage or reduce its outlast value by 2. So we are going to reduce the outlast value by 2. Um, and let's see what the uh, Ravager does. Even is on the left, uh, odd is on the right. So odd. So it's doing its odd ability. So roll a stat test and apply the result against each ability. Okay, so we are going to roll a stat test. Uh, I get an eight. Uh, applying against each of the abilities, um, the only one I miss is seven, the, the defend value for uh, the gladiator. Uh, all of my other ranks are above um, a, a seven, an eight. So um, for each fail test, you suffer two piercing health damage. If you critically fail this stat test, you become vulnerable. Okay, so I'm going to take two damage. Now, that's going to um, spur uh, the Templar's uh, raise ability. So he's going to raise for health. That can go above his uh, maximum. And it also is going to spur his counterattack abilities. So he has uh, adrenaline going and his lunar blade. So his lunar blade is going to allow him to do 45 energy damage. 45 energy damage. Uh, we will apply that to the big value. 
Uh, and then his attack is going to, let's say it's going to go 15. It's going to go against the defendability. Okay. And uh, let's see. Now we have to roll for the Templar. The Templar is going to uh, roll, and he gets a 9. Oh, so his stat test, he rolled a 9, and as you can see, he has uh, pretty low stats com uh, abilities compared to the Gladiator. So he loses 3 out of the 10. So uh, what that means is um, he is going to take 6 piercing health damage, so he's down to 13. <clears throat> and I think what we'll do is we'll have the gladiator use his uh, uh, king's elixir on the Templar. So in this case, the Templar will get the heal from that item, um, and that will go up to uh, four uh, iron scale. King's elixir is four health and two energy, so he's going to heal four health and go up to 17. Okay, so that was Godly Presence. That was the first mastery. The second mastery is Group Irradiation. Each target becomes irradiated one for every 10 energy this ability has. Um, now, the Templar has a block that he uh, has, has been doing. Um, so he has a four block going into each hero. We obviously couldn't block the piercing damage from the first mastery. So the second mastery is going to do irradiated one excuse me for every 10 energy this ability has and it starts with a hundred energy so we are getting hit with an irradiated 10 uh, ability here so irradiated minus our food rating would be three um, so that's seven damage um, the block is going to take four of that so he suffers uh, three damage so we're gonna go down to 25 on the gladiator that hurt, and then we are going to suffer uh, five, uh, so ten damage minus the food rating of the Templar, which is five, It'll be five total, minus his block of four. So he takes one damage. So every time he's damaged, he gets a heal based on that King's Elixir. So that King's Elixir is healing him for four health. He goes back up to his max, and now we have to roll for mutations. Uh, so the gladiator is going to try and avoid getting mutated. Uh, he rolls a six, which is uh, good enough. And the Templar rolls a four. He also avoids getting it. Now the gladiator, he, he gets a counterattack off again because of this irradiation. So the counterattack is going to be, once again, his lunar blade uh, is going to do 45 damage. And let's do that against the second uh energy value and then he gets a, um, a gladius because of his adrenaline is, is going he gets a counter attack for for health so we will uh, do the health damage uh, based on his uh, defend uh, score okay so at the end of the two abilities coming in this is our battle mat I know it's a little bit chaotic again these uh, placards will be laminated so we'll be able to, to draw right on these it'll be very easy to um, to manage your your uh, villain card here um, it's a little bit more chaotic on the battle mat okay so <clears throat> all of that happened um, the Templar is using a uh, cleansed crystal so we already did that with the minus two to the outlast okay um, so then the last ability that this is doing is the mutated parasites um, that's the last boss ability that it gets treat this ability as a swarm type opponent on any round in which a hero chooses not to target the swarm or fails their skill roll against the swarm uh, all heroes lose two ranks in one stat of their choice, um, and that is permanently. So in this case, none of us uh, went up against the um, the outlast value. We didn't prepare or or try and defend against the uh, the parasites. So each of us is going to lose two ranks in one of our abilities, uh, or in one of our. Um, uh, one of our stats. So one of our stats, I'm going to take, uh, let's go with survival for the gladiator. And actually, we're going to do survival for the Templar as well. Um, 
and that will get us down from there. Now, treat this ability as a swarm on any round in which a hero chooses not or fails. All heroes lose two ranks. So technically, we're not targeted by this uh, ability, so the gladiator does not get another counterattack off. Let's go ahead and resolve the damage. We have 15, uh, 15 and 15 on the defend value. That's 45. Um, so he's got 105 left uh, health on his defend value. Um, we have 55 uh, coming in on his uh, godly presence. So that's going to be 145 left there. And then we have 45 damage on his uh, second energy value, the Dissecting Inferno. So he has 55 energy left there. Outlast is going to uh, reduce itself by one. Um, and uh, let's see. Um, one set of their choice lose one additional rank. Okay, so Outlast does go down by one, so that's two plus one plus one is five, uh, four. Um, so we have sixteen Outlast. Uh, so at the be at the end of the first uh, round of combat with the Ravager, uh, we have two hundred health, one hundred and five health, one hundred and fifty health, one hundred forty five energy, fifty five energy, and sixteen Outlast. Now, I had um, specified before that there was a, a few different ways to win this game. Um, we're actually going to try and save the Ravager in this game. We're not trying to defeat it. We're not trying to kill it. We want to put it to sleep and, and make it uh, uh, less cranky. Uh, it's burninating the countryside, and uh, we don't like that. It's bad for business. Uh, we don't want uh, Ferrara to, to fall, or any of the city states to fall. Maybe Tari. Tari's kind of an evil city. Uh, we can play the bad guys in another game. Okay, so then we're going to move on to the second round of combat. Now, using the Cleanse Crystal does not consume it. It just allows you to use it. Um, so in this, uh, in this um, I think what we're going to do this round, the Gladiator and the Templar are going to try and uh, roll a stat test against this mutated parasite's um, um, outlast ability. That way we don't lose ranks of a stat. Uh, we reduce that down a little bit and hopefully we'll get a couple of other um, uh, counterattacks off because the gladiator still has quite a bit of uh, energy left. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is the um, gladiator is going to roll a stat test against uh, survival and he rolls a six. So that is a success, and that means our outlast is going to be reduced by one. Okay, and that also means that he's immune to this uh, ability, this mutated parasite's ability. So he will not uh, lose anything from that. Um, same thing, I think our Templar is going to roll a uh, stat test against survival as well. And he rolls a nine, just barely makes it. Um, so we also reduce Outlast by one again. Okay, um, at the end of the round, Outlast will be reduced one more time. Now, <clears throat> one other thing is that each of us are performing an action. Um, and I think what we're going to do is uh, we can use an a item. We both have Belt of Many Pouches, so that means we both can use uh, one of the crystals that we have, the Cleansed Crystals, and that will reduce Outlast by two per item. So we're going to do uh, two and two, so that's four, five, six, seven. So that will be reducing it by uh, seven at the end of this round. That will be a good thing. Um, and then we'll see what the Ravager does. <clears throat> Gonna roll a d6, roll the one again. So it's using again all of its three abilities on the right side. So we roll a stat test and apply the result against each ability. We roll a seven, so he makes all of them. That means uh, we don't take any damage, but he is targeted. So that also means he's dealing damage back to the, uh, the Ravager. Um, in this case, I think his um, Lunar Blade is going to be dealing damage, 45 damage again, uh, to his uh, first mastery value, while his Gladius is doing 15 damage to one of his other uh, abilities. We're going to choose the Defend ability again. Um, and then we have, uh, so that resolves the Gladiator. Let's resolve the Templar. We roll a stat test and get a 6. 
We make everything except for one, so that means the Templar is going to go down by two piercing damage. Now the Templar has a King's Elixir. We, the Gladiator used it on him last round, so he's gonna heal four health, bringing him back up to 19. So he is healed again. Okay, and then we have the second mastery, des Desiccating Inferno. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, so we haven't done, um, I was gonna say we could do a Frost Touch attack against, um, the Templar has the capacity to deal energy damage, um, but he doesn't need to because um, he is doing the uh, the outlast value. He's attack he's attacking the outlast. Okay, so group irradiation. Each target becomes irradiated one for every ten energy this ability has. Now we've reduced the energy uh, of this ability down to fifty five. So that means we only are going to be suffering five energy damage, energy drain from this ability. Um, now the gladiator does not have a block coming in this round like he did last round from the Templar So that is five damage minus the three uh, of his food rating. So he takes two and That means he's down to 23 health. That also means that he's being targeted again by uh, the Ravager so his um, uh, Lunar blade is going to go off once again, and that is going to do another 45 damage So let's go ahead and apply it to here um, we didn't actually apply our 10 damage from the Ferroran um, uh, Knowledges, so let's go ahead and apply the 10 damage to this value And then we have another counterattack coming in because of the gladiators adrenaline, so that's going to be 15 more damage And once again, we have um, our battle mat that looks like this. We've done everything except for the last uh, ability. His last ability is Mutated Parasites. We are both immune to that because that's the ability we chose to to work on this round. Um, so now we just go ahead and uh, tally the, the changes here. So 15 and 15 is 35. Um, <clears throat> so then we have 70 health left on his Defend ability. We have uh, 90 damage, uh, so 100 minus 45 is, he's got 55 energy left here. He's got 45 energy left here, and uh, 16 minus seven, there's nine um, outlast left. So at the end of our second round, you can see we have uh, quite a bit of health left over here, but look at that, we're almost done um, saving the Ravager, putting it back to it, into its slumber. All right, so let's go on round three. This is the last round that the Templar has his King's Elixir. Um, so we will go ahead and uh, I'm going to have the gladiator work again on the uh, outlast value. So the outlast is going to go down by one at the end of the round. Um, he's going to roll a stat test against, nav uh, against uh, survival, which is a five. He makes that, so that's a reduced reduction by one. Templar also gets uh, his survival roll, so we reduce it by one. Gladiator has uh, Swarm as favorite op opponent, so that's another one. They're both using um, the Cleansed Crystal from Ferora, so that each will, will reduce it by another two. So that's eight. That's eight. I may have actually missed the uh, favorite opponent last round because he would have done the same thing. So he this should actually be eight. And if we get this, uh, if, if his... Uh, his, uh, I think we're going to be able to, to do this. His reflecting um, um, uh, counterattacks are going to destroy the Ravager's energy this round, hopefully. All right, so we also have a 10 energy damage coming in. Let's go ahead and do 10 energy here. Um, and let's see what the Ravager does this round. So we get a two. This round, he's using his left side abilities. So the first thing that happens is group, health, and navigate. Targets suffer six health damage. Okay, and we have to roll navigate. Uh, made it here. And made it here. Both rolled a three. So we both uh, gain that. So each target suffers six health damage. Um, the gladiator is going to go down to uh, 17 health and the Templar is going to go down to 13 health. The Templar still has the King's Elixir, so he's raised for four. 
So he's up to 17. Uh, he doesn't get the heal for energy because he's still over his energy value. He still has a raise because of that. Um, okay, and then uh, that means the uh, gladiator gets his counterattack off. Um, and so he is going to be doing 15 damage to here. And let's do 45 damage to there uh, to his second mastery. Um, okay, a literal mountain of muscle, its movements cause destruction and a hail of debris for miles around it. Um, so his impenetrable plating kicks in. That's a block 40. Group explore, those who fail cannot deal piercing damage this round. Okay, so group, uh, so we have to do a explore. Made it here made it here by just barely uh, now that means the gladiator is um, uh, targeted again it was a group explore roll he's targeted he gets that 45 damage again because of the lunar blade and the 15 damage again because of his uh, adrenaline so 15 more damage into the shield and let's do 45 damage here Okay, and then we have uh, the last ability is a group health, energy, and survival. Each target suffers four health and energy damage, um, so we're going to lose four health and energy, so he's 16. He's only got 13 health left, and um, those who fail the uh, survival gain heat exhaustion. Now we actually are carrying the um, uh, ever-filling water skin, um, so we are immune to heat exhaustion, so that's a good thing. We're gonna roll survival, get it with a hex. Five, get that, okay. Ravager opens its maw, letting loose a wave of heat as intense as the sun. So um, everyone uh, suffers four health and energy. We've done the health and energy here. We'll do the health and energy here. Four and 13. Uh, but because he's target, he is damaged, um, his King's Elixir also kicks back in uh, and he is healed back up to 17. Okay, so because he was uh, hit again, um, that means we get another counterattack in. So we have another 15 uh, up here and another 45 down here. So at the end of the round, we can see we've got uh, 45 damage coming into health. Um, we have 55 damage here and we have 90 damage here and enough to deal its uh, last outlast. Now, it is gaining a block, so it's reducing, uh, uh, the block amount is reduce, uh, is 40, it's reducing uh, our energy damage by 40. So this 45 becomes a 50, uh, what, 45, so that would become a five. And it's still enough to defeat the Ravager. We've taken out all of its abilities on the right hand side and that means we have saved the day so we're done uh, we managed to take the gladiator and the Templar on this journey across the sands of Chirax um, we've done missions we've done discoveries we've we've uh, uh, fought a genie um, we were uh, going to go into the cave of wonders but uh, decided not to uh, the cave of Yajib um, the Ravager was ever present and uh, in the beginning of the game that first whole third of the game we were fighting tooth and nail to try and survive um, so I, I hope you guys had a fun time watching this video. Um, I will follow up with a couple images of uh, our end product here, um, uh, of our end uh, heroes. And uh, yeah, until next time, thanks for watching. Hey adventurers, thanks for watching uh, this three-part video uh, series on the Sands of Chirax two-hero video. Uh, we played the Gladiator and the Templar, um, had a great time. We went through quite a few different subsystems and showed off as much as I could uh, of the game. Um, I hope you had a great time watching. I had a great time playing. 
I really thought we were going to die there in the beginning. Um, <clears throat> so it was good to see that uh, we just barely uh, managed to to find that caravan location in the wastes. Um, so um, until next time, uh, thanks again. And let us know if you have any questions or uh, would like to comment. Please do. Thank you.